Dutch Edam cheese looks like this. It's round. Ball-shaped, even. Its round shape has led to stories about being fired from cannons and naval battles, helping snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. But most other cheeses aren't shaped like balls, nor do they inspire tales of victory against the odds. Most are either traditional cheese wheel shaped, or these days a rectangular block. So why does Edam go against the mold? Why is Edam cheese round? Hey there, cheese historians! I'm Julia, and this is Cheese History, a channel where we talk about the history of cheese in all of its weird and wonderfulness. Edam cheese is made from cow's milk, and it gets its name from the town of Edam in North Holland in the Netherlands, a small port town that shipped a lot of Edam over many centuries. One of Edam cheese's most distinctive features is its ball-like shape. When I look at this cheese, I can't help but wonder, why did they decide to make it this shape? Most cheeses are either made in rectangular blocks or wheels with straight sides and a flat top and bottom. A ball shape is much more difficult to press a cheese into because the odds of it turning out some wonky shape are quite high. So why did the cheesemakers of Edam choose to make their cheese in this shape? I went looking for the answer to this question. But it turns out there isn't much information on why the Dutch first started making Edam into round balls. So I've come up with my own theories, such as that the cheesemakers of Edam wanted to prove that they were better at cheesemaking than everyone else. And to prove it, they made their cheeses into perfectly round balls, because it was more difficult. Or that it was part of an elaborate ruse to smuggle their cheese into Germany disguised as cannonballs. I have no proof of either of these theories. So even though I don't know why it was first made round, I can tell you why I think it continued to be made round. Because it turned out to be a great shape for shipping cheese overseas in the days before refrigeration. This might seem counterintuitive, because surely a square or rectangular block of cheese could be stacked neatly with no wasted space, while a round ball of cheese is the least efficient shape because it has no flat sides, so there will always be lots of gaps between the cheeses. To understand why round was the best shape for shipping Edam cheese, we have to first look at when Edam cheese became so popular that it was being shipped overseas. Cheese making in Holland, which is part of the modern-day Netherlands, began to take off between 1350 and 1500. The swampy land that made up most of Holland had been drained, and it ended up suiting dairy farming rather than grain crops. This meant that the Dutch needed to import a lot of their grain because they couldn't grow enough for themselves. So they needed other things that they could sell to pay for the grain. Because the land was so suited to dairy farming, cheese was one of these products, and it was being exported to the Rhine and Flanders in the 15th century. A word about the town of Edam at this point. Edam cheese is one of those cheeses that's named after the place where it was sold. Edam is a Dutch town, which before the Marke Meer was dammed off in the 1930s, was on the shores of the Zuider Zee. The town dates back to at least the 12th century. It's sheltered from the North Sea, but it also has pretty easy access to it, as well as to the rivers and canals that flow into the Zuider Zee. So it's a good place to ship goods, including cheese. The cheese itself was made in the surrounding area, pretty close to the town. The area is flat, like pretty much all of Holland, and made good land for dairy farming. From Edam, the cheese could be shipped around the Zuider Zee, and through the many waterways and rivers that were connected to it, and from there could end up in the surrounding countries. The earliest record appears to be in a pond toll register from the town of Kampen, which is near the mouth of the Eisel River. The toll was specifically for ships coming from Holland during 1439 to 1441, because of the Dutch Hanseatic War, which lasted from 1438 to 1441. Merchant ships from Kampar and Deventer, a town further up the Eisel, where important markets were held, were caught between the two warring parties, because they were a connection point between the Dutch and German markets. Their ships suffered damage because of privateers from Holland, and the Pontol was introduced early in the war on ships from Holland passing through Kampen to compensate both cities. Cheese and butter were among the goods being shipped from Holland via Kampen. In this toll register, cheese from Edam is listed under these five different names. Four of them basically amount to small cheese, and the fifth is Edam cheese. Many of these entries have quantities with them too, and the amounts of small cheese coming out of Edam over these three years is pretty impressive, in total close to 34,000 cheeses. Edam wasn't the only place shipping Kleine Kastius through Kampen in these years. Ships from Hörmerend, Horn, Maidenblick, and Munikendam were also mentioned as paying tolls for various types of small cheeses, including small Edam cheese shipped from Hörmerend. All of these places were also on the shores of the Zuider Zee. The fact that cheese coming from Edam was called small cheese at this point suggests that it may already have had its signature size and possibly even shape. It's around the mid 15th century that the name Edamer begins to appear in the Rhineland, so it also appears to be making it as far afield as Germany. 
And from there, exports only increased as the growth in Holland's economy outpaced the rest of Europe during the 16th to 18th centuries. As the economy grew, the countryside also changed, including dairy farms, which grew from 5 to 6 cows in a typical herd in 1500, to 15 by 1550, and then 25 by 1600. That doesn't sound like many cows by today's standards, where herds can be in the hundreds, but back then people had to do everything by hand. So hand milking 25 cows is a lot of work. So the Dutch economy starts to boom, and because much of their land isn't good for growing staple grain crops, instead it's great for making products like cheese that they can sell and export to other countries in return for grain. The rise of Dutch cheese making also happened to coincide with the global expansion of Dutch trade. In 1588, seven provinces, including Holland, rebelled against their Spanish rulers and created the Republic of the Seven United Netherlands, also known as the Dutch Republic. Not long afterwards, in 1602, the Dutch East India Company was founded and began to create a trade empire, including colonies and spice-producing islands in the Indies. This meant that they had ships sailing all over the world trading goods. And with these ships, they could trade their cheese, including Edam. It can't really be a coincidence that Edam cheese exports really started to take off around 1600, at exactly the same time that the Dutch ships were starting to sail all over the world, building a global trading empire. By this time, cheesemakers around Edam had been making and selling their small cheese for several hundred years at least, and it was a big part of their local economy. But why was this small cheese with its ball-like shape so good for shipping overseas? There are three practical reasons why a ball shape is better for shipping than either a block or a cylindrical cheese wheel shape. The first is that the spherical shape means that the cheese has less surface area. Why is this important? Because there's no refrigeration available during the heights of the Dutch Golden Age, in the late 16th century to late 17th century, when Holland was shipping a lot of Edam cheese overseas. No refrigeration means that the cheese has to survive in the hold of a ship through whatever weather that ship encounters en route, be it hot or cold. Having less surface area means that the cheese won't dry out as much because there is less surface for the moisture trapped beneath the outer rind to escape from. Today, ball-shaped Edam cheese is typically coated in wax, like this one is, to stop the cheese from drying out too much. But Edam cheese makers only started using wax in the 20th century. In the 17th and 18th centuries, when the trade in Edam was at its height, this wasn't an option. But Edam was still red. It was dyed red using a dye called Turnsol. And after this description of how it was done by Paul Kinstead, I for one am really glad that this Edam is covered in wax. It was prepared by pressing the juice out of the berries of the Crozophoria tinctoria plant and dipping linen rags in the juice until the rags became saturated. After the rags were dried in the sun, they were hung over a tub filled with a solution of a small amount of lime dissolved in urine. Ammonia vapors rising from the urine turned the turnsole pigments in the rags violet. Edam cheeses were rubbed with the turnsole rags until they acquired a glowing red color. The red color did not penetrate into the cheese, but remained on the rind, where it imparted a very distinctive appearance that made Edam cheese instantly recognizable in the marketplace. The dye also provided a measure of resistance to insects, helping maintain the integrity of the rind. So this outer red colouring helped stop insects from creating holes that would make the cheese dry out faster, undermining one of the benefits of a smaller surface area. The red colour also helped Edam stand out from other cheeses. Because, I mean, it's bright red, so why wouldn't it stand out? You're going to see this, you're going to be like, this is a bright red cheese, it looks cool, it looks awesome, I must have it now. One thing to know about Dutch cheesemakers during the 16th and 17th century is that they were innovative, focusing on making a small number of cheeses really, really well, and making them distinctive. One way of thinking about Edam's ball-like shape is that it helps it to stand out from all the other cheeses. Shaping a cheese like a ball is tricky to do unless you have the equipment and techniques to do it easily, which the Dutch would likely have needed to create. As well as being round, Edam also had its red coating, which made it distinctive as most other cheeses weren't coloured in this way. So the shape and colour of Edam helped it stand out in the sea of cheeses. The spherical shape also helped stop the outer rind sustaining damage during shipment too. This was the second major advantage. As the sphere has no edges, it's more difficult to damage the sides of the cheese as it's being packed and unpacked throughout its journey. When the edges and flat surfaces are involved, it's easier to pack things wrong or catch those edges on something in a way that causes cracks in the cheese's rind. Edam's shape makes this less likely to happen, so the cheese has a greater chance of reaching its destination in the best possible condition. The third advantage Edam's shape has is that it's easier to pack into the barrels that we use to ship cheese by ship. 
While a sphere is the least efficient when being stacked onto a square crate, the ball shape of EDAM would make packing it into a barrel much easier, because basically you would just have to chuck the cheeses into the barrel until it's full, rather than having a set layout to make the most of the barrel's odd shape. So, the spherical shape of EDAM means that it has less surface area so that it dries out less, it's more resistant to cracking when it's handled because it has no edges or flat surfaces, and it's easy to pack into barrels. All these were advantages for shipping EDAM over any distance because it meant that it could arrive in the best possible condition. But if being round had all of these advantages, why is most EDAM produced today not round, taking on the classic block shape instead? The simple answer is that today, a block is the more efficient shape to make and to transport, and as a result, most commercially made cheeses are made in blocks. One huge block of cheese can be cut into many smaller blocks of different sizes, depending on what the consumers want. They can be stacked and packed tightly together for storage, transport, and even display on supermarket shelves. They're easy to slice and to grate. A block is simply a more convenient shape compared to a ball or a wheel. However, Dutch EDAM is still made in round balls. This EDAM that I'm holding right now is from the Netherlands, and it is undoubtedly round, although it has got a bit sort of squash on the top and the bottom because I've been storing it for quite a few months and it's all sitting on either that way or that way, so therefore it's got a bit flattened. But it was definitely round when I first got it. So in a sense, EDAM cheese hasn't stopped being round, it's just not the shape that most people in the world would buy cheese labelled as EDAM in. EDAM's round shape originally gave it many advantages. It stood out from other cheeses as it was a different shape. It was easy and efficient to transport and difficult to damage along the way. Making it round gave it an advantage and made it different even if it required more innovation and care to make it round. But the world has changed a lot since the rise of EDAM as a popular export cheese. Today, the more efficient and less interesting rectangular block dominates the cheese market, not just for EDAM, but for most cheeses. So what do you think? Are blocks of cheese the way to go, or should we go back to the more interesting and visually appealing wheels and balls of cheese? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. There's also a like button there if you enjoyed the video, and you can also subscribe if you haven't already. All of these things help my video spread to more people, so share the cheese history! Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for more cheese history!